Here's my spoil board setup. The outside dimensions are the physical dimensions. The rectangle sketch is the limits of my router working head. Um, the vertical lines represent the aluminum extrusions underneath so I can try to avoid any interferences with the drill. And the big holes represent threaded insert holes. Here I've trimmed off the excess where my router can't reach. So where the rectangle is, is the limits of my router bit. Um, I went out there and measured them and I did this so the bottom left will be the zero zero when I home in my machine. Here we have our imported spoil board into AutoCAD Fusion 360. The, this outside dimension represents the limits, working limits of my router. And these big holes represent our holes required for our 20, quarter 20 inch threaded inserts. Um, our board is 3 quarter inch tall, thick, and our inserts are half inch tall. We have the depth set to 5 eighths. And what that will leave is an eighth inch gap in between for our router bit to kind of hover over so we won't have any collisions. So to get our G-code set up, we're going to go to our manufacturing tab. And we're going to start our setup, which I already, I'll just redo. First thing is setup. I always work from left to right uh, for the tabs. And in each tab, I go from top to bottom. It's a milling operation. I always choose the orientation that I want. Z is the top face of my board. The X axis, you, I like to pick a right face. And for the origin, I like to pick model box point instead of stock because uh, sometimes I leave stock on, sometimes I don't. But as far as my model, I know exactly where I'm going to start. And I want to start in this bottom corner, which is the home or the origin of my CNC machine. Uh, so I pick there, X is to the right, Y positive is up, and Z positive is vertical. Stock, uh, I like to pick relative size box, then zero and zero, and that adds uh, no excess. That's just my preference. For to cut our holes, I'm going to use a 2D pattern. And first we need to make sure our tool is in our library. And my tool is already in here, but I'll just kind of go over it quick. <clears throat> this is just information if you need to reorder. For the cutting, I chose a white side brand flat end mill with two flutes this stuff doesn't apply to me carbide you can put it in there um, the coolant no no coolant inches the important dimensions here in the geometry are the diameter and the flute length uh, the rest of this stuff isn't quite as, as important because I don't have auto tool change and my Z axis will always be determined to each tool change because I don't have a automatic tool chain system. Uh, the shoulder length, that's kind of important. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe not for my case. The feeds and speeds, you'll have to look up using a chip calculator. Using, It's mostly determined by your router cutting spindle speed, uh, how many flutes you have and the diameter, and the material of your cutting. You'll have to look into that. Uh, for MDF, these settings work for me. 80 inch, 80 inches per minute for the feed rate. Uh, the plunge rate, 25 to 30 for me, and the surface speed of like 200 to 225 seems to work pretty good for me. Post process is this is the number of the tool. If you have an automatic tool change system, um, I just gave it a number because it's nice to know number five is my quarter inch end mill. This stuff does not apply to me. You'll have to look into this if it does. Coolant, uh, live tool, I think that's for a spindle. 
so my cutting bit is installed or programmed so that's my setup so now I'm gonna begin my bore and what I'm gonna do is uh, do just a single hole and first I pick my tool go to my library pick number five this is the one we just programmed in and here comes my feeds and speeds and whatever I have set up in my library pops up you can override these if you want so next tab our geometry I'm just gonna test one hole and that looks good as far as the height I usually leave the clearance and retract height as default that seems to work fine for me for the top height I like to pick model top because I want to know exactly where it's going to start the bottom height whole bottom I can see it there zero offsets for both and I think that works for my setup the passes 0 .04, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 tolerance I'm okay with the pitch that's pretty safe uh, what that means is the depth of cut per revolution so that's 0 0.04 inches stock to leave none linking I'm just gonna leave that alone so you hit OK our bore preview comes up so what I like to do is I like to select the operation that I just created hit simulate tool path I, I like to turn on the stock and then I like to hit transparent and then I like to hit wireframe and then I can see how this cuts and I hit go to run the simulation and so this diameter this usually just does a bore but because of the the bit diameter and the diameter of this hole this allows me to use this operation to cut a cylinder hole and not have a little peg on the inside if this hole was bigger there would be a peg and we'd have to use a different operation but this one works for me <clears throat> it doesn't look like anything's popping up so that operation is good for one so I'm going to edit my bore operation and under geometry I'm going to add the rest of these holes and this yellow line just kind of calculates the path between each hole. okay that looks good I got all my holes selected hit OK and that saves it what we can do is right click our bore operation we can hit simulate fast forward it just kind of gives you a quick preview of what it should look like looks acceptable and now we can save out our G code. Now we're going to save out our G code. So I left click set our setup. And below you see the bore is underneath there. There's only one operation, which is fine. So left click setup, hit post process. If this is your first time, I'll just kind of go through this quick. Configuration folder, I leave as a default. For the post configuration, I run a GRBL setup. Um, you can pick whatever works or whatever machine you have, but uh, the X Pro 4 is based off of this. Uh, your output folder, it's up to you. Mine is on a Dropbox account. For the program name, we're going to put threaded inserts or board inserts. 
and for me I need to make sure this is set to millimeters um, that's the way my control program reads it as if I set it to inches the scales off by 25.4 or whatever factor that is scale factor that is uh, open NC file and editor that's important for me too and I'll show you at the on the next step and the G28 save for tracks I like to set this to no. That's your personal preference. You can play with this. Um, I don't like it. So I hit post. Here's my folder. I hit save. So when I hit save, this pops up. This is our G code editor. And I can't figure out a way to turn this off or but if I have this line, my G code sender program doesn't like this. M6 is a tool change and T5 is my number 5 tool so I just have to delete this hit save and close and I'm ready to send this to my machine Okay, I'm setting my zero. Okay, so uh, my Z depth is set. My X and Y are zero though. So I'm just going to reset the Z only. So now if I go to 00, zero work coordinate. Should be good there. 